So it's time to stop deep diving into object-oriented theory and get to writing some code. And so we're going to start with something simple. We're going to do encapsulation. The second thing we're going to do is iteration, but for now we're just going to do encapsulation, and then in the next section we'll do iteration. And really, most of this code you've already done, we're just kind of refactoring it and moving things around and taking these, you know, functions that we named by convention and we allowed the calling code to use and uh, and moving them into the class using some pointers. So our real accomplishment here is the map arrow put, the map arrow get, and the map arrow del. These things are now named and ac accessed in such a way that they are attributes. The, the functions we're calling are attributes in the class itself. And so other than that, it's not that different. We, and so it's not that big of a deal. The other thing we're going to do is be a little more explicit about what things in these classes are public and what things in this class that we're building are private. So we'll start with the map entry. This is the structure that makes up the nodes of the linked lists. Uh, the key is a character string and the actual value is an integer that we, we're just going to make it simple to, we've got we to dynamically allocate the key like we've been doing. Um, and then we have a prev and a next. The key there is the prev and the next are double underscore, so that means they're private. But we are going to decide that key and value are public. And we just indicate that, much like Python would do, by not putting double underscores in front of it and remembering in our mind that they're allowed to be used in calling code. The map structure, uh, most of it looks pretty simple. We have a head, we have a tail, and we have a count. You've been maintaining those for some time now. Those are private attributes, so we've renamed them in such a way that they have double underscores in front of them. And then we have a series of public methods. We have five of them. The key thing is these are pointers to functions. And that's what void star put, that parenthesis star put. That means that there is a we're allocating a variable in the structure named put and it is a function pointer that will return a void. It's a pointer to a function that returns a void. So not only are we defining the attribute that we're going to use to access the function, we're also defining the calling sequence. It returns a void, and it takes three parameters, a struct map pointer to self, char star key, and int value. So when it's all said and done, this is not putting the code in here as it might say in JavaScript, for example, what is is, is a single 64-bit number, which is a pointer to the beginning of a function. Now, the function method signature has to match. So we're defining the method signature, but in terms of allocating, we're really allocating one pointer for put, one pointer for get, one pointer for size, one pointer for dump, and one pointer for del. And again, you know, you look at get. Well, get takes as its first parameter a pointer to the map, which is self, a key that we're going to use to do the lookup, and then a default value to return, and then get returns an int. And so that, that's pretty straightforward. It took me a little while to get the pattern right about, because the parentheses here are really, really important, because we're both defining the attribute name and the rules of its use and the method signature of the function that we're eventually going to point to. Okay? But that's pretty much it, right? We, we're just going to put these things in. And so the constructor is pretty straightforward. It's not that different than the constructor that you did. we got to build these functions, double underscore map put, double underscore map get, map size. They're, they're outside of this. They're up above us in the source code somewhere. And we're just saying p arrow put, which is an attribute put, public attribute put, is equal to ampersand, the address of the double underscore map put function. Super simple. Amp, ampersand is address of. Address of that function. Get is address of that function. Size is address of that function. Dump is address of the function. And we're done. And and this is kind of showing you that the this is, let's see, head is a 64-bit pointer, tail is a 64-bit pointer, count is probably a 64-bit integer or a 32-bit integer. Put, get, size, dump, and del are all 64-bit. So the size of the map itself, the map structure, is about, you know, 10 words or less. And that, again, has to do with uh, efficiency, right? But you probably have most of the code you need for map put, map get, map size, map dump, and map del. 
So a map dump is pretty simple. You know, the if we look at this, the uh, you know it's a the self is the pointer to the map, so it has a head and a next, and we're going to just go through it until cur is equal to null. We got a map entry, which is the type. Now we don't double underscore the cur because that's really just an automatic variable inside this function. That has nothing to do with the outside world. And you'll notice that we're just as access underscore double underscore head. We're accessing double underscore next because we're in the class, right? And so that those are private, but they're totally legit to access them when we're building a dump tool inside the class. So private things are accessed in the methods in the class. That's normal, right? We don't have to hide those. I'll tell you, when I'm building something like this, the first thing I want to get to work is some kind of a dumper because how, I mean, when I write this code before I hand parts of it over to you, I have like map dump, map dump, map dump, map dump. Every line I put a map dump and eventually when stuff starts working, I start taking the map dumps out. So just Debug, 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 always. So that's that's why I'm just like, I couldn't write this code if I didn't have a map dump, and so I'm going to make you guys do it as well. So the destructor, like most destructors, the key thing is to draw the picture and figure out what parts were dynamically allocated and then call free, or which parts came from malloc, and then make sure you free them. And so we're just going to loop through, and again, we're in the class, so we're happily using double underscore attributes. We're going to loop through, we're going to, and the, the order of this is always important, but by now it should make sense. We're going to free the key, because remember that's a string pointer that we malloc. We do not need to free the value, that's just actually part of the map entry struct, and when, we're going to get rid of that in a second. We're going, to, we're going to advance to the next one first, and then we're going to free the current map entry, and then we're going to say current next, and we're going to loop up. And so eventually we're just going to go through the linked list and free the key and then free the entry itself, and we've given back all of our data. And then we're all done with that. We actually free the 10 words or so that is the map structure. Again, this should start to look familiar to you. So get is pretty simple, as long as you have some code that like is map find. Um, you know, map find is gonna do all the hard work, but it but map find can look at underscore head and, and um, and all that stuff, and next, and look at all that, and write some for loops, it should be not too hard. Um, and again, underscore, underscore, map find is private, but we're in the class, and so just have fun talking to the private stuff. Map put is something you're gonna have to write, but if you think about it, if you get map find and it returns you, it will ret and you've done this before, you've used a find-like method to find the thing in the linked list, and you update it. If you found it, it's really simple. You just change the value in return. And if not, you add it to the end of the list. You construct a new map entry and you add it to the end of the list. And so again, I just hope by now you can knock these things out. And so that's basically it. I mean, if you really think this is was a very simple section where all we're doing is changing from globally named functions, we're enforcing the rules of private, double underscore, and then we're taking those pointers. We've declared pointers to functions in our map, and then our constructor sets them up, and the rest is really just refactoring code that you pretty much already have.